Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's August the 8th and we're looking at Psalm 93 and 94. Now, <clears throat> sometimes when we're reading these Psalms we can get confused because we're used to the normal tenses of our English language. We're normal, we normally are used to the tense of past, present and future. But in scripture when a prophet speaks about the future he often in fact all the time he will speak about it in his present tense and that's because the prophet sees the um, the things that the Lord is revealing to him he sees them in his present tense and he records them in his present tense um, this is a this is a quirk of scripture, um, but unless we're aware of that, we can become muddled. And uh, very often, when the Lord wants to emphasise the certainty, uh, the absolute certainty of uh, a future event, then the Lord will sometimes put it in the past tense. And so there we are. You see, now when we when we're translating scripture, it's very important that we translate the tenses correctly. If you put the wrong tense on scripture, then you have not translated correctly. So let's read the, let's read the passage together, Psalm 93. I've called it God's majesty. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved thy throne is established of old thou art from everlasting the floods have lifted up O Lord the floods have lifted up their voice the floods lift up their waves the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters yea than the mighty waves of the sea thy testimonies are very sure Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, for ever. Now let's just look back through this psalm. It's only five verses. But <clears throat> what we see is that the psalmist is speaking in the present tense and he says, The Lord reigneth. Okay? He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Now, on earth, um, at the present tent, present time, um, God is not reigning. Um, we say this in the sense that um, in Jerusalem there is no throne, in Zion there is no throne, nor is there a king to go to meet. But the Lord Jesus is coming, and he's coming in glory. It's very interesting that verse 1 is an incidental confirmation of the deity of Christ because it talks about the Lord reigneth and the word Lord there in the authorized version is in capitals which means that it is the the word Jehovah as we would understand it and um, when it says the Lord reigneth it means Jehovah reigneth but we know that the person that's going to reign is going to be the Lord Jesus and so therefore we can infer without any shadow of a doubt that the word Lord there is referring to the Lord Jesus. Um, Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. And in the last verse it says, Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, for ever. And so the... <coughs> The power and the majesty and the strength of the Lord Jesus is from everlasting to everlasting. He's going to have an eternal kingdom. It's also very interesting in this psalm that very often in scripture the Gentile nations are referred to as the waves of the sea. Uh, but the Lord, it says in verse 4, is, is high the Lord on high is mightier 
than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. When the Lord Jesus comes, he will come to bring peace to the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. Now let's look at Psalm 94. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. So it's a psalm about God's justice and it's a call upon the Lord God. That's the Lord God, um, um, the Lord Jesus. It's a call to him to bring vengeance upon the world. This isn't something that any prayer, that any praying Christian can, can ask he says, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, and render a reward to the proud. Now we know that all judgment has been committed to the Son, that he is the judge of all men. Um, he says, Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine inheritance. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear... Shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastiseth the heathen, shall he not correct? And he that teacheth man knowledge, does he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastiseth. Who thou, who thou chastenest, O Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. May thou mayest give rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who shall rise up for me against evil doers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. Now my password is in verse 22 and 23. Let me read it to you. He says, But the Lord is my defence, and, and my God is the rock of my refuge. He, he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. Now, the expression cut them off, it, it refers to um, death, physical death. What the Lord is going to do is he's going to take all those that are wicked and he's going to bring their lives to a sudden end. Um, this isn't something that Christians would ever pray. This is something that only Israel in the old, in fact, only the righteous in the old covenant would pray. Well, there we are. That's my thought for the day. I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.